I wanted to do a quick example with WizRuled, and WizRuled will take a data file and map all of the data fields together to really see what are the rules between these data fields. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to first open up a data file, and what, what I did here is I, I first selected Excel, and I'm just going to open up this Excel file here. This is the file we've been using and I made a few edits to it so that WizRule would find some things and, and I know that sheet one is the, f the data file so I'm gonna hit OK and it brings in my data I mean we, we could kinda ignore this field it looks like I, I must have had an extra field in there with some info uh, at the top or maybe a blank space but but I know that this really isn't a field the last field I hear uh, had in the data was X2 so I'm going to look at my data fields. Uh, again, it brought the data in pretty well. This is a quality, a quality, a date, a date, a date. Yep, this is a quality, a quality, and a number, and a number. So I do know that these are numbers, that these are more text fields or, or ASCII type fields, and these are dates. So once I've done that, that's kind of step one, get the data in, and that's usually quite easy. I'll click on the rule type. And in the rule type, what we're doing here is, is we're basically setting the probability of the rule. So if a rule doesn't have a 95% probability, it's just going to get rid of itself and, and not consider itself a rule. I mean, you could make this an 80% probability if you'd like, but we're just I'm going to keep it at a higher level j just for this example. So we, we have these uh, 95 probability, 95 on the, the formula rules. Uh, we're, we have to find at least 40 transactions out of the 4,821 transactions in this data file. We have to find at least 40 that meet the rule. So that's that one. And the, the maximum number of conditions, or maximum here, is, is three. So we're not going to get into a rule that, you know, if this and that and that and that and that, and we, we keep going and going and going, it's, it's more or less just going to be contained to, uh, you know, if this field is this, then that field is that. If this field and that field and that field are the same, you know, that kind of thing. So, so it's only going to be uh, three fields that are a part of that rule, as opposed to, or up to three fields as opposed to looking at every field in that uh, data file. So with all of this done, I'm going to keep the other options the same. And this is the beauty of WizRule. All you have to do is push one button, Issue Reports. So now that the reports have been run, we, we can take a look at First off, the overview report, and I, I really like this one. What, what this does is it quickly summarizes the data fields and looks for trends just you know in the data itself. So in this case, we have the enterer field, and we have uh, about five enterers. It gives you the number of cases, the percentages, and, and etc. In this case, it, it, let me take another field, invoice amount. It, it, it's only going to show you a few you know, that have sort of a higher percentage, and then it's going to, to kind of lump everything else into some of the other uh, uh, stratification buckets. Uh, but again, you can kind of quickly see, you know, where does my data fall on the strata line, which is useful. From an invoice date point of view, again, can do a bit of the same thing here. Check date point of view, I mean vendor number point of view. Uh, th this one again we may have this thing called the others so we, we have uh, here about 57 percent uh, being represented above here by these vendors and then we have the others being 43 percent and uh, WizRule does that just so that it doesn't end up you know going out for for days and days but but again this is very interesting you can kind of see top vendors top day ranges uh, you know, if there is any sort of invoice number, like here's one where we have a lot of that invoice number, 46 cases, it, by the way, more than the rule type, so that, that's good. And then we have the others, so there, there are a lot of individual ones. But, but it does give you a good overview, uh, aptly named, of your data. So next off, I, I'm going to jump down to the spelling report because I, I find this one kind of cute. Uh, what it will do is it'll actually find, say, in a vendor number field that this particular vendor number appeared 45 times, again, more than the, the rule of 40. And however, we have this one vendor number that is a deviation. So this is the deviation here. 
and for that deviation we uh, basically are showing it here 1681513 as opposed to 1713 so it's, it's just raising up the point you know is this something that we should be worried about let's go back to the rule report and there is a lot here I don't want you know I think you can get a, a bit overwhelmed looking at all of these rules uh, but uh, you know I think just starting off at the top level we can uh, quickly take a look at the fields we put in we can look at things like unconditional rules uh, such as you know if enter is this or that or that you know the the rule basically is these are the only enters which we we saw uh, as well in our data file uh, here's another one though that that's really kind of interesting is you know if the vendor number is this the enter was KD and that happened 295 times so it's the probability is 98.7 percent however we had these deviations and what you can quickly do is just uh, highlight these deviations and and select view and you can view this deviation over here so you can see LB entered this one we'll view that one LB entered that one too uh, so again you, you can very quickly see when you have a rule like this and it is a little odd why is someone else entering information for that vendor when we've already had uh, a vendor uh, uh, you know a person entering for everything else so again just kind of looking through all these rules here you can you know quickly scan all of them and, and try to look for issues however uh, probably the easiest thing to do is more or less just to go to the deviation report and take a look at the deviation report to see what what is a, a deviation per whiz rule so in, in taking a look at the deviations they're basically laid out by the level of unlikelihood so we, which is nice you know it's kind of put at this higher level however you know some of the the rules may be a little more complex you know and, and may be a little bit beyond what you want to take a look at so but but again I mean we could take a look at this one here uh, we, we say if the invoice state is between 523 and, and, and 3610 the invoice amount is between this value so the average is 165 and then you know if, if these are all this true then x2 is between these values here or an average of 334 what's interesting here is x2 is 0 whereas uh, invoice amount is 108 so you may be asking what is x2 and I, I can kind of scroll over here to deviation uh, number 5 you know so you could see this as well X2 is something I put in. I, I actually multiplied uh, column, uh, you know, or uh, column B in this case, uh, the invoice amount field. I, I multiplied that by two, and that gave me X2. And what's interesting is that rule again exists in almost every case. Uh, so invoice amount times two equals X2. However, there were three deviations. Here's one of the worst ones uh, where I have $100,000 posted in X2, but the invoice amount is 3710. And, and I did this purposely so that we can you know, have the test show this. And I added another, uh, in this case, 10,000. When the invoice amount was 3095, it should be you know, about six or 7,000. Here's another one. So this is a really good example, in my opinion, of, of showing you the deviation where you have a formula rule and then whiz rule is actually calculated calculating the uh, you know the, the deviation from that formula rule so wanted to, to again uh, walk you through uh, all of these but but what you can do is is kind of scroll down and notice my rule probability is still 98 percent I mean the lowest one here I believe should be around uh, it should be higher than 95 percent because that's what we set and uh, again the, the lowest one we're finding with deviations is 97.6 percent so uh, you know and again this is interesting I mean, if, if vendor number is between one is one six eight one five oh oh the invoice amount is is between this negative ninety thirty and twenty dollars and sixty two cents I mean it's it happens a hundred and twenty three times probability is ninety seven point six percent but yet I have this one item where it's 2,303 uh, uh, showing up. So again, very interesting uh, to, to take a look at. And what I find is that WizRule can find quite a bit of information in your data that you, you just never knew was there. And, and these types of deviations are very hard to find uh, it, unless you're, you're running uh, multiple types of analysis on each field in your data.
what WizRule does is it, it kind of does all of that rule analysis and all of that deviation analysis so that you can get a final result of only those deviations that are again uh, where, where the rules probability is 95 percent or greater yet we still have a deviation on that rule What I like about WizRule is that data integrity issues quickly show themselves and, and you can waste a lot of time looking at a data file, relying on the data file, and then realizing you have a problem. So WizRule gets around a lot of those issues. It's almost like a, a statistician joined your audit team, but the only thing you needed to do is push one button. You're focusing on those critical deviations, and they're actually sorted that way. So you, you, you kind of work your way down the deviation report and find those those issues. And, and I think when you do find things, you, you look like a bit of a star in, in finding it because people sit there and go, how did they find that? It's, it's almost impossible how they found that. And again, all you did was push really one button to get that result.